The fifth, sixth, and seventh place where Jesus shed his blood for us can be found in John chapter 19, verses 17 through 37. And this is where we actually read about how Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary for us to redeem us from the curse. The fifth place where Jesus shed his blood was when he opened up those healing hands and allowed them to nail them to the cross of Calvary for us. And by shedding his blood through his healing hands, everything that we now touch can be blessed because he redeemed us from the curse. He redeemed us from the curse when we read about how he was crowned the curse. And now everything we put our hands to can be blessed. He has redeemed us from the curse. And not only everything that we touch can be blessed, but because his healing hands were, ne were nailed to that cross, we now can open up our hands and extend his healing power through our hands to others. The sixth place that Jesus shed his blood for us was when he allowed them to nail his feet to the cross. This is very significant because now, because he shed his blood for us by, by allowing his feet to be nailed to that cross, we can now walk in authority on this earth. He gave, he won back all authority for us by shedding his blood through those feet. And every place we now walk now belongs to us because Jesus shed his blood for us. And so we now can walk in all authority. Amen. The seventh and the final place where Jesus shed his blood that we're going to discuss is when they pierced his side. Now Jesus at this point had already died. He gave up his spirit while on the cross. Now it was customary to break the bones of someone that was crucified, but to fulfill all prophecy in the word of God, not one bone was broken in his body. Instead, a soldier came and pierced his side. And when they pierced his side, all the blood that remained and the water in his body gushed out of him with a mighty force. Now this is very significant for us. And I find it amazing, just amazing what's in this portion of scripture. And we can find this, as I said, in John 19, verses 33 through 37. And this was as they pierced his side and all the remaining blood and all the water gushed out of him with a mighty force. Now, Jesus, in the physical realm, he was, he was hanging on the cross and his physical body was dead. It died. It was crucified on the cross. Now we, spiritually speaking, represent the spiritual body of Jesus Christ. And when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we, our human fleshly sinful nature, is also nailed to that cross on Calvary. And we are redeemed from, from sin. The old sinful man is nailed to that cross by the shedding of the blood. And it's amazing, this portion of scripture, because not only are we crucified with Jesus on the cross, and you know, we no longer are called sinners. We are now called the redeemed. And as the redeemed, the remaining power that flowed, that, that gushed out of his body at this point is very significant because he gave to us at this moment the power in his blood to walk in the full blessings and promises of God and to walk in all authority in the power 
of the blood because his blood gushed out of him with a force and he gave to us the power in his blood at this moment. And I also said that, that at this moment, not only did the remaining blood gush out of him, but all the water that was in him because of the, gra- the force of gravity gushed out of him as they pierced his side. And this is the power of the new birth, of when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we are washed in the blood, and we are created brand new. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.